Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'd, habitatillah, a question was asked Hello Khalid, I hope that you are well First, I would just like to say thank you for taking the time to reply to me and allow me to ask you a question It is much appreciated I hope that my questions don't come across as trivial as I do not wish to waste your time And this is definitely not a waste of time, nor is it trivial uh, I am a young man from England who wishes to say his shahada. I've been studying Arabic now for nearly two years, hopefully studying in Cairo in the near future. I've watched numerous YouTube lectures, including yours, discussing a wide range of Islamic topics, and I've also read numerous books, including the Quran, to bring me to this stage in my journey. However, I have a few things hiding, uh, holding me back, which I hope you will be able to assist me with. I have doubts about how I can tell my family of reversion meaning uh, to, to revert to Islam. I'm not sure how to convey my views to them in a manner that will show them the true Islam as I come from a very non-religious, secular family. Do you know the best way to go about this? I have read on some of the reviews of my local mosque that the services are given in Urdu because the local community of Muslims is predominantly Pakistani. Do you know how I could best integrate myself with it, within the community with these language and cultural differences, as I want to visit the mosque to start praying and studying. Marriage is something that I wish for in the future. However, I'm not sure how to go about seeking a spouse or revert, or as a revert without the family connection in a halal way. Just another point I would like to finish with, are there any book recommendations you could provide me with for someone beginning to seek knowledge as an introduction? Thank you again for your time, all the best. First of all, a series of questions which are very beneficial and we are glad and, and, and grateful to Allah, first and foremost, to be able to assist you in your journey, hopefully. First and foremost, I'd like to say, embrace Islam. Don't hesitate for one second. And before I get to your questions, I'm gonna tell you why. Because uh, what was interesting, this, pre this uh, previous week, and I hope you don't mind that I'm answering your video in form, video form, and I'm not going to share your details, of course. But this past week, I went. To, I attended a lecture in a book, a very famous book called Kitab al-Tawheed, which is uh, the book of monotheism. And it was a sheikh I, I'm not familiar with, but he's coming from a place that I used to live in. I'm here in Saudi Arabia. And he, uh, he travels, you know, to teach this book one day a week. So I'm going to start attending his lecture. It was the first time. And one of the, he mentioned a, a story during the, the text we were studying, which was about prohibiting uh, polytheism, meaning not to taint your worship with polytheistic beliefs, non-Islamic beliefs, beliefs that call to worshiping uh, other than Allah or deities with Allah. And he mentioned the story of... Uh, a person who traveled, who had knowledge, perhaps you could refer to him as a scholar, who traveled to an African uh, country. And he actually engaged with some Christians and a man came to him and said, I'm ready to embrace Islam. And he was ready and he is a Christian um, and he was excited and so forth. And this scholar told him, just wait, Tomorrow, there's going to be the opportunity to come to the congregation and embrace uh, Islam with the imam in the community. So the man said, okay, but he says, you know, I have some problems and so forth. And this is a true story, according to this scholar. And what happened is before the time he was able to go to meet the community and embrace Islam with the prayer leader, the Imam, he was actually killed by people in his village who heard he was going to become Muslim, that they were very, uh, you know, perhaps tribal and perhaps, uh, uh, you know, very uh, conservative and closed minded to, of course, learning about Islam and leaving the faith of Christianity. So they actually killed him. And then the community was wondering, how should we bury him as a Muslim or a uh, non-Muslim? So these are other issues, side issues. The point being is he did not have, the, this imam should have encouraged him to embrace Islam then, and then perhaps he could have come in front of the community. 
No one knows what their future holds. That's the, the, the shahid or the main point of mentioning this story. No one knows. So my first advice is go to the nearest community and embrace Islam. You know, go to the imam or go to someone in there and say, hey, you know, I want to become Muslim. Enter the fold of the Islamic Brotherhood. Secondly, getting down to some of your questions, and we'll try our best to, to assist you. Uh, I have doubts about how I can tell my family of becoming, uh, of reverting to Islam. Okay, many of us, and I myself, uh, am a revert to Islam. Uh, of course, my family was is, is much more open, so that was not a, I never had a, an issue with that or with them because of this. Um, but what I would say to them, first I would embrace Islam. Secondly, then I would gradually, if you feel that's going to, going to be a, a source of conflict, I would gradually uh, introduce the fact that you've become a Muslim. Say, you know, I found a new faith and it encourages me to be better with the family and it encourages me to have a direct relationship with God and it encourages me to worship him and him alone and not divert, devote my worship to anyone in the creation. So I would explain to them in a very nice way that there's only, that there's basically positive uh, benefits. And very importantly, or more important, uh, just as important, or pro perhaps more important, is that you illustrate that in your conduct. Don't become Muslim and then be harsh and say, hey, why is there pork in the refrigerator? Why is there alcohol? Yeah, you should do this. No, many of us unfortunately made those mistakes because we didn't have this kind of information. So my advice is, is be gradual, be patient with your family, and when you feel it's the right time, you can share that with them or share, it depends on your, you know better, your family situation and how they're going to react. So I would say to be, uh, you know, really show them the true Islam through your manners. And there's a beautiful um, hadith text, which is a narration of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in which he said, Ma min shayin fil uh, 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 this hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, there isn't a thing that weighs heavier on the scale of a believer than good manners. And that's the point. Show your Islam. The second point you mentioned, uh, the second part of your question I want to address, um, as far as, I, I would say, I don't know what city you are, you're in or town or what have you, you are in, in the UK, but I would, uh, if you want to send an email, I don't know, but I could just ask other people that I know from the UK who can share information with me, who I can share with you uh, uh, about communities to go to, uh, to uh, that speak English, because I don't think that that's not... Unfortunately, this is just a, a dilemma that we have in the Western countries, especially, is that you have many communities that have migrated, many uh, immigrant communities, whether they're from Pakistan, India, uh, various African nations, Somalia, and so forth, who, and, and, so, and some of them, not all of them, but some of them, they do not do their duty by learning English for one, if you're going to be in an English-speaking country, because they should be delivering the message of Islam, okay? And the adherents are, it's not a community religion. It's not about a Pakistani cultural experience. It's not about an Indian cultural experience. It's not about a, uh, a Somali cultural experience or any other nation, but it's about Islam. It's about submitting to the will of God and him and him alone and worshiping him and him alone and not associating any partners with him. And follow, and the way that we do that is following the way of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So it's not reserved to any particular tribe, region, or uh, community, or nation, but rather you need to find a place where you're going to feel comfortable, where perhaps there may even be some of your peers, and that is very important. So that's one of the things I would advise is to actually look for a community that. Uh, doesn't call to sectarianism uh, and doesn't call to um, uh, uh, racism and doesn't exclude you. 
So that's very important because that can be an experience that turns people off. We know many people who've had those types of experiences. Well, Allah understand. The, uh, and so, and you also need a community that's going to be welcoming and will have classes or can teach you. Uh, someone in the class can, in the, in the community can teach you. Marriage will come. So I wouldn't uh, rush that part. But first I'd learn something about your, 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 you know, learn about Islam. Begin to practice and don't, Allah is going to take care of that. And express that, that, uh, your, your wish to marry. Uh, but I would say that it's better to first ground yourself first because it, it will be much more difficult, obviously, as a new revert. You know, people have to know you, and, and that's a very important part of Islam is knowing who, the, who uh, a suitor is and a suitable person because someone may be giving you their daughter or you may be marrying another revert, and they need to know are you a faithful person and how, how you're practicing and things like this. And likewise, for you, the same. So you need to learn a little bit about Islam and learn about the rights of Islamic marriage so that way you can have uh, more opportunity to have a more fruitful and uh, unified marital experience. Bi'idhnillah uh, ta'ala. And a last point that you made, you talked about book recommendations to seek knowledge as an introduction. I would say uh, one of the books, uh, you know, that is important, uh, that's in English, is there's a book, it's called The Three Principles. The Three Principles. Uh, Asulu Talatha. Uh, the Three Principles or The Three Fundamentals. If you type that in, you can download a free copy or uh, something like that that just gives you a grounding in faith and, and Tawheed. So I... I uh, perhaps there are even better books than that for you to really start and, you know, to grow into. But uh, that is one beginning book because it really teaches you about some of the Islamic concepts of monotheism and the different forms of worship, different ways in which we worship Allah. And, uh, you know, gives you some very important grounding principles. And of course, it's better to have with a teacher, but at least you can be reading those kind of, some of those books, and perhaps they will be a source of guidance uh, for you. And we welcome you with open arms, and we hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will favor you with guidance. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. And any questions, any way that I can help you, even though I'm far away here in Saudi Arabia, you can always send me an email. Wassalamu alaikum wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.